أرجو رضاك يا الله أنت الرحيم يا الله هبني عطاك يا الله أنت الكريم منك العطاء يا الله أنت العظيم يا الله فيك الرجاء يا الله أنت الحليم السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته بسم الله الحمد لله والصلاة والسلام على رسول الله نستعد للسشن now basically like an open mic session, but it's going to be based upon the theme of the conference, of course, because we're not going to move away from the theme of the conference, about establishing peace and justice in the world as Muslims, of course. So for, in terms of that, we, uh, of course, have got our three honorable sheikhs, Mushayyak, inshallah, Abdul Bari Yahya over here. MashaAllah from USA, the Sheikh Mohammed Saleh, and of course, Saeed Raji. I should have got the name right, right? <laughs> Alhamdulillah. So I'd like to first of all ask each of the scholars just to say a few things about peace and justice to theme the session. And for about 30 minutes after that, we'll be doing Q&A. So you'll be asked to come to the mics and we'll give the sisters their preference like, like I did in the morning, inshallah. Okay, so who would like to go first? Sheikh Mohammed. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I know that you must be tired, but I want to hear the reply. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Great. MashaAllah la quwata illa billah. Alhamdulillah wa salatu wa salamu ala nabihi wa mustafa. Sayyidina Muhammadin wa ala alihi wa sahbihi wa man wa lah wa ba'ah. The relationship between justice and peace is the same as the relationship between the rainwater and the produce, fruits and vegetations. Without water, without rain, there is no fruits, there is no vegetations, there is no produce. Without justice, there is no peace. It's as simple as that. Even according to the natural law of cause and effect, every action has a reaction. Because of that, and as we say that the Qur'an normally solves the problems by uprooting them. In Surah Al-Ma'idah, ayah number 8, and likewise in Surah Al-Nisa, in ayah number 135, the great divine instruction of establishing justice under any circumstances in order to lead to peace. For instance, in Surah Al-Ma'idah, Allah the Almighty says, يَا أَيُّهَا الَّذِينَ آمَنُوا كُونُوا قَوَّامِينَ لِلَّهِ شُهَدَاءَ بِالْقِصْطِ وَلَا يَجْرِمَنَّكُمْ شَنَآنُ قَوْمٍ عَلَىٰ أَلَّا تَعْدِلُوا اِعْدِلُوا هُوَ أَقْرَبُ لِلتَّقُوَىٰ وَاتَّقُوا اللَّهَ إِنْ O you who believe, be upright for Allah's sake. Bearers of witness to the truth. And let not hatred incite you not to be equitable and just in your dealing with others, even if others happen to be your enemies. A divine command. Be just and equitable. That is nearer to righteousness and piety. And Allah is fully aware of what you do and well acquainted. If you go to the ayah 135 of Surah An-Nisa, the command is the same but with a slight change in the term. Ya ayuha al-ladheena amanu kunu qawameena bilqisti shuhada'a lillah. O you who believe, be maintainers of justice. Bearers of witness for Allah's sake. Even if it is against your own selves, your parents, or your relatives. Yani, 
even if your shahada or testimony is going to hurt you, it is against you. But if it is justice, deliver it for your parents, for your relatives. The summary of all of that is in ayah number 90 of Surah an nahl The most comprehensive ayah in this regard. Inna Allah ya'muru bil wal ihsani wa ita'i dil qurba wa yanha'an il fahshai wal munkari wal baghi ya'idhukum la'allakum tadakkaroon Allah commands justice, righteousness, and giving the kindred. And he forbids indecency, evil, and injustice. al baghi which is the opposite of justice. Umar ibn Khattab radiallahu anhu, and that is the last statement I'm going to make. When a Persian commander of chief came to negotiate with him, peace process, he kept asking about him, where can I find Umar? And Umar ibn Khattab, Amir al-Mu'mineen, was the leader of the Ummah back then. And every time he inquires about him, somebody would say, you may find him here, you may find him there. And found it, finally, he was guided to him. He was lying down under a tree, in the shade of a tree. So he made that very famous remark when he said, Hakamta, fa'adalta, fa'aminta, fa'nimta ya Umar. You ruled, and you ruled with justice. As a result of that, you got the safety and security. Because of that, you are able to sleep freely under the shade of a tree without any security or bodyguards. So basically, justice would definitely lead to peace. Sheikh Mohammed. Sheikh Saeed, could you add a few words about peace and justice as well, please? Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. Salatu wa salam ala rasulihi al-kareem, Sayyidina wa nabiyyina Muhammad wa ala alihi wa sahbihi ajma'in. I believe Sheikh Muhammad, Zahallah Khair, he said enough for all of us. I just want to add one statement from a hadith of Nabi sallallahu alayhi wa sallam that Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wa sallam considered peace one of the ni'am of this dunya. Man asbaha minkum al when that hadith, famous hadith, whoever you know, gets up in this morning and he has peace in his house. And he mentioned a few other things. So peace is, Jazakallah khair, the Shaykh divine very well. And I don't think there's nothing much to add to it. I pass the microphone, I see a lot of people standing. So I feel bad if I were standing waiting for another lecture. So. <laughs> Innate in every person is desire for justice. Without justice, person's heart, person's mind would not be at peace. Everyone tries and struggles to have justice, even a child. When a child has a piece of candy taken away from him or her, the first thing that child tries to do is to try to get it back himself. So that child will try and jump and grab at the piece of candy that you've taken from him. But if he's not able to, and he can't do anything, he will use a weapon that children use often, and that is they break down and cry. Why do they break down and cry? In hopes, because they have no other means. So that's why you break down and cry. It's as if you were saying, you know, I have no other means. I need to get that candy back. And so that's why when a person is afflicted with something and they cry, it doesn't nullify beautiful patience. Because when you're crying and asking Allah, it's as if you're saying, I have no one else, Ya Allah, except for you. That's why Prophet Yaqub cried. And justice, peace and justice, they go hand in hand. And in order for to have a peaceful family, even with your children, you have to be fair. When the Messenger of Allah was asked, 
to bear witness over a piece of property or garden that a companion was going to give to one of his sons. He said, have you given all your children this? And he said, no. And so the Messenger of Allah said, I will not witness over something that is false or injustice. So you have to be fair with your children also. And a society or a country or a nation will only be able to stand and will only be able to continue to be strong if it's just. Once there's oppression, then there will be no peace. And that nation or state will fail. Even if it's a non-Muslim country, if that non-Muslim country is just, as Shaykh al-Islam ibn Taymiyyah rahimahullah mentioned, that sometimes Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allows a non-Muslim nation to continue to be strong when it's just. And sometimes a Muslim country is destroyed because there's oppression. And so in order for us to have peace, there must be justice in the family, in the community, and in the nation, in the ummah. Jazakallah khair. Shaykh, alhamdulillah for those words of wisdom from the three of our honorable sheikhs. Now what I'd like to do now is invite uh, on the topic question from the audience. We've got mic one, two, three. We're going to start with the sisters in time-honored favor, inshallah, favoring the sisters three times over the brothers once, subhanallah, the mothers, should I say. So let's start with the sisters and not yet Muslims are favored in this regard, in this auditorium. So, tafaddal, sisters. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. I am Christian and uh, I came here uh, with my husband and I wanted to ask uh, why I have two seats separate? Who would like to answer that question? <laughs> <laughs> They're all pointing at each other. Can you believe this? <laughs> I believe anyone from the floor can answer the question, mashallah, any Muslim. But we would recommend Sheikh Saeed, of course. Yalla, <laughs> bismillah. Bismillah rahman rahim First of all, my dear sister, we welcome you to this beautiful event. And we say as the Messenger of Allah, our Prophet taught us, peace upon you. Salam ala man huda, peace for those who follow the guidance. And I'm sure being with your sisters or with the ladies on this ladies section, you are in very safe hands. And I'm sure the sisters around you are welcoming you and making you feel comfortable. And I understand since I live in the West, and we all live in the West, that sometimes it's a little bit, you know, there are some discomfort coming with your husband, but at the same time, uh, not sitting with him in the same event. It may create some little discomfort, but I assure you, the peace and the tranquility that is being showered upon this place, he says it had reached you and showered your heart. Why men and women are segregated? In this gathering, in Islam, like we do in the West, in the West, everything is based on system, and we follow the rules. When we work in McDonald's, I cannot come to my work wearing my nice outfit, white thobe. Politicians, likewise. In Japan, by the way, for those of you who have been to Japan, in Japan, the subway, the train, one cart is for women and is painted pink. One cart is for men and is painted blue. And they segregate between men and women completely. And there is no way they will allow you in certain cities to get to the female cards, even if you don't know the language. In China, when you come to the Chinese house, some of the etiquettes is for you to take off your shoes, and they don't shake hands, but they bow down. They have their custom and their culture. We, the people who go to those places, we respect their traditions. In Islam, 
women and men are segregated or they are placed in a different place perhaps segregation or the word segregated could be a little bit harsh but they are placed in different places and I guarantee you my dear sister that you will feel more comfortable being with your sisters than being sitting to your left there's a guy sitting to your right and there's another guy sitting to your left and so on some man sitting to your friend and there are a lot of Muslim women who feel comfortable or they would like to cover themselves or fix their hijab they feel comfortable being in their environment and as a Muslim we facilitate that for them however in open places in the marketplaces things like that as you can see in the expedition you will see that men and women respectively walking together doing what they need to do husband and wife daughters and fathers and so on and for the protection I'm sure I'm sure if your husband and I'm sure he's a good-looking husband but if he's with the beautiful you know with this young lady they may look at him or a young man may look at you and perhaps Islam will protect you and him and prevent some unnecessary uh, hazard in that area so in a nutshell it's more conducive more healthier for us to this setting and it's more comfortable majority of the women they prefer sitting in that area and majority of the men they prefer sitting in this area Okay, subhanAllah. It looks like we're running out of time already. But anyway, we can take a few more questions, inshallah. So, mic number one, can we have the next question, please? My name is Farooq. I'm a medical professional. I have a question for uh, Sheikh Salah. Talking about the Quran being the message of peace, I... I would like to kind of ask you, in this current environment where it is, Islam is being portrayed as being quite the contrary to what exactly it is meant to be, we often have to respond to non-Muslims and counter this propaganda in many ways. So would you be able to give us the top five arguments or quotes from the Quran that we could use to prove to the non-Muslims that indeed the Quran and Islam carries a message of peace to all humanity. Jazakallah khairan for choosing me to answer that question. <laughs> Thank you so much. I will let the Quran answer this question in a state. To make the long story short, go to Surah Al-Mumtahana, chapter 60, ayah number 8. And the following ayah, ayah number nine, in which Allah the Almighty says, لا ينهاكم الله عن الذين لم يقاتلوكم في الدين ولم يخرجوكم من دياركم أن تبروهم وتقسطوا إليهم إن الله يحب المقسطين. Allah does not forbid you. To respect and deal with kindness and respect with those who are not following your religion yet they did not fight against you on account of your religion they did not exile you out of your homes nor did they assist others to expel you out of your homes so if they are not enemies if they do not take the initiative to fight against you, then Allah does not forbid you to deal with them kindly and respect them. Yet, إِنَّمَا يَنْهَاكُمْ In the following ayah. عَنِ الَّذِينَ قَاتَلُوكُمْ فِي الدِّينِ وَأَخْرَجُوكُمْ مِنْ دِيَارِكُمْ وَظَاهَرُوا عَلَىٰ إِخْرَاجِكُمْ أَنْ تَوَلَّوْا He only forbids you to be friends with those who fought against you, kicked you out of your homes, assisted others in your expulsion out of your homes on account of your religion and this is very fair enough this is one reference in surah al-baqarah the ayat 
which normally Pat Robertson presents in his 700 Club channel, where he says Islam teaches violence and so on. I say, I'll be more than happy to uh, have a discussion with you live on air. But just open the Quran and don't take things out of context. I only mention names because, you know, we have to handle and deal with the sources of the stereotyping and constantly bashing of Islam and Muslims. I made this challenge in public. Because simply if you open the Quran, and this is what I've done with many priests, with many rabbis, it's a challenge. What does the ayah say? وَقَاتِلُوا فِي سَبِيلِ اللَّهِ الَّذِينَ يُقَاتِلُونَكُمْ وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا إِنَّ اللَّهَ لَا يُحِبُّ الْمُعْتَدِينَ Fight for the sake of Allah, in the cause of Allah. Fight whom? What does the human rights organizations and the United Nations Amendment say in this regard? Every nation has a right to defend itself, doesn't it? Yes. This is what the Quran said. Fight against those who fight against you. But there is something extra, very beautiful. You can't find any Urba in the Quran, which is, وَلَا تَعْتَدُوا And transgress not. Because Allah does not like the transgressors. The aggressors. Then if you go to Surah Al-Anfal, Allah the Almighty says, وَإِن جَنَحُوا لِلسَّلْمِ فَجْنَحْ لَهَا وَتَوَكَّلْ عَلَى اللَّهِ إِنَّ اللَّهَ يُحِبُّ الْمُتَوَكِّلِينَ The ayah before that 60, I believe, says, وَأَعِدُّ لَهُمْ You have to prepare the required force, cavalry, or whatever for your enemies in case that you're being attacked. But if your enemies recline into peace, then Allah commands you to accept the peace truth and recline into peace as well. He said, فَجْنَحْ لَهَا Accept it. Recline into peace. What if they are trying to deceive you? Put your trust in Allah. Allah loves those who put their trust in Him. If they are trying to deceive Allah, they will end up deceiving themselves. Unless if you have a solid proof that it's a trick. So there are many ayat in the Qur'an regulating the process of war as well as peace. But to say that the Qur'an calls for violence and killing the infidels and non-Muslims, this is a plain lie and this is not supported by any reference in the Qur'an. So I provided you three different references in three chapters. I believe they should be more than enough for now for the sake of time. We still have some more though. Thank you, Sheikh. Wajazakum. Zakhala Khair, Sheikh Mohammed. Ayyub Assalamu Alaikum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. Zakum Allahu Khairan. He created the universe. To him belong the heavens and the earth. The ever living, he is the first. He's the owner of mercy. He sent his messengers to warn his creatures of the grave dangers of worshipping other than Allah. There is none greater than the Creator.